Hello everyone. Well, this week we start talking about some capital budgeting decisions. And this is quite interesting because this is an area where your corporate finance and your management accounting kind of overlap because uh, under capital budgeting decisions, we're talking about cash flow analysis. And that and typically that's taught in a management accounting class. And then it's also taught in the corporate finance class. And you had, I think, last week the weighted cost of capital, which is one of the components that goes into the management accounting side of doing a capital budgeting decision. So why do firms do capital budgeting? Well, plant expansion, equipment selection, uh, decisions whether to lease or buy a property uh, or even equipment equipment replacement, cost reduction. In other words, can I get a, uh, can I buy an asset that's going to reduce my costs? And sometimes you use uh, the capital budgeting tends to fall into two categories, screening decisions and preference decisions. Well, first of all, screening means is think about in economics where, you know, everybody has uh, unlimited wants but they only have limited resources. So we want everything, right? But we only have so much money. And so we have to know that uh, when we only have a limited amount of capital to invest, that whatever it is we're going to invest it in has to meet a specific standard, right? Present standard, right, of acceptance. So we could use a capital budgeting technique to determine whether or not a, a specific um, investment meets our standard and according to the uh, process uh, if it doesn't then we just drop the whole idea altogether right the other one is a preference decision so let's say we only have a certain amount of money to invest and we have three different competing uh, ideas or three different things that we could use the money for um, and we could use the capital budgeting decision techniques to uh, decide which of the three would have the highest potential to increase the equity or the value in the firm. Now, uh, we, you probably talked a lot about uh, time value of money in your finance class so far, but typically this is the, the chapter where we talk about time value of money uh, in the management accounting course. And, um, so uh, we, I won't go into all that right now because hopefully you've already studied that in your finance. But of course, the idea is, is the money today is worth uh, more money, uh, more. It buys more today than it will buy in the future, so to speak, because the money uh, cash and we're talking about cash money, it, it depreciates in value. So big giant firms do not like to have uh, huge amounts of cash on hand. They rather have their cash invested. Of course, you have to have cash for operating cash flows, uh, you know, for operating costs and that kind of thing. But, but you don't want to have too much. And in times when the economy uh, and the stock market goes uh, south and, and things are going funny in our economy, big businesses who are still generating a lot of cash they, uh, they typically have cash that they're sitting on, and they don't really like that. They like to have that cash invested in assets that's going to uh, create more value for the firm or create more cash flow or more profits. Uh, so cash is an asset like inventory or anything else. It can depreciate in value if it's held too long. Okay, so uh, evaluating the acceptance. So what we want to do is we want to find uh, a, a, a method. Now there's several methods that's introduced in this chapter of capital uh, investment decision analysis. Uh, however, uh, the one that you want to take into account the time value of money, that's why this is introduced here, and uh, is, is the most uh, beneficial. Uh, and the net present value method is the method that takes into the about uh, the uh, that takes into the account the time value of money. Now there's others that are good and they touch on it in this this chapter, but this is really the one that is going to be uh, one that you use. Now this is interesting because some of the others like break-even analysis or simple returns um, 
on investment, those are typically the types of things that a uh, your some people in your organization might use. People that have not taken management accounting or, or corporate finance would use different techniques that uh, are less sophisticated, let's say, than the net present value method. So the net present value method is to, to calculate the present uh, value of future cash flows and, and ca cash outflows. And so let's see if I have seen. So I like this slide because this is typical outflows. Uh, you know, uh, think about this is cash. This is real money, not, not like a uh, your income statement where it could be payables or it could be receivables. This is real money. So you think about when we're going to invest in something with cash, you see here you have the initial investment. Of course, anything you're going to buy, you have an initial investment. You also have what's uh, incremental operating costs. Whatever it is that you purchase, whatever kind of asset, you're going to have some incremental costs to keep that um, that asset functional, you, as well as most likely you're going to need some working capital to keep it going. So the idea is to take into account everything that goes in, uh, in other words, cash that you have to put out on this investment over the life of the investment, not just initially, but over the life of the investment. Repairs and, and maintenance, you know, maybe this, um, uh, it's some type of a machine that needs to be uh, maintain look think about uh vehicles that you know constantly have some repair and maintenance to them big trucks or machinery uh that kind of thing so money going out this is all money out over the life of that asset and then on the money coming in uh first of all we think about okay well what's the money coming in if i'm going to buy this asset what's it going to bring in well incremental revenue that's why we're doing this right we think that we're going to get some money coming in uh, now, and so what the other things have to be taken into account is, well, what if we're doing this to reduce costs? We just said that one of the reasons why we invest in an asset is to reduce costs. So if my cash outgo for our existing, for example, our existing uh, piece of equipment, or maybe we have vehicles that's less uh, energy efficient or gets worse gas mileage and we can get a better gas mileage vehicle, uh, that we're looking at, then that's a reduction of cost. So that's cash that we're saving, and that counts as cash flow inflow on this particular uh, model. Uh, now, at the end of the life of the asset, does it have a salvage value? Is it going to be worth anything? In other words, like, again, I bought this truck or a uh, uh, vehicle maybe for um, our business, and we drive it, we use it, it, it has a purpose, and at the end, when we're ready to upgrade, get a new one or replace it, is there any value left? Typically, there might be some money, uh, might be some value left. And so that's why most big companies auction off their old vehicles or, or larger pieces of equipment. Sometimes you have a piece of technology that has no value. It's just something you just maybe even have to pay somebody to take it away. You know, we, when we're talking about computers and things that, that come outdated very quickly, uh, there's no salvage value, really. It's just a matter of let's just get rid of it. Uh, and then the release of working capital. So the idea is when we put an asset in in place, we need some cash set aside that's call, uh, called working capital to keep that, um, that asset functional. And at the end of the lifespan, uh, we no longer have that specific asset, uh, so the release of working capital for that asset is released. Now, again, if this is a piece of equipment and we're going to replace it with a newer model, uh, then you will have working capital associated with the new asset. But this is specifically about the individual asset that we're evaluating. Now, the net present value method also takes into account uh, the time value of money, like we said, and so we have to be able to calculate what that um, that discount rate is, or what is that rate that we're going to use. And maybe in your finance class, you used a chart uh, to figure out, um, you know, what what the present value of future cash flows is. 
and you have to pick a, a, a percentage, you know, is it going to be 5%, 10%, 15%? So don't think that, oh my gosh, if, if the dollar declines in value by 10% a year, we're all in big trouble. And that's true if that was the case. But we're not talking about necessarily uh, inflation and that kind of thing. What we're talking about is one of the things that uh, we use in the discount rate many times is the average cost of capital. And I think you looked at that last uh, week in your finance class for the weighted cost of capital. And that is one of the things that um, you, you might use that weighted cost of capital number as the minimum required rate of return on investment. In other words, if it's going to cost me, uh, if I my uh, average cost of borrowed funds is 10 or 12 or 15 percent, then my uh, my discount rate needs to be you know 10, 12, 15 percent. Okay, because what we're going to do is we're going to determine whether or not this asset is going to uh, produce that much of a return and then some. So when we uh, when we look at the net present value method, we take all the costs that go out uh, and all the costs that go in. And, and here's an example. Um, you know, offered a five-year contract to provide computer parts for a large manufacturer. Cost of new equipment. I'm trying to talk fast because I don't want to go too long on these videos. Uh, relining equipment in three years, salvage at the end of the year, at the end of the lifespan, um, sales revenues, uh, cost of parts sold, and so, in, and they're going to use a 10% discount rate at the end of five years the working capital is released. And so here we go, net cash inflow is we're going to have sales minus the cost of goods. Salary shipping annual net cash inflows eighty thousand dollars. Okay, so net present value. Here's how this works. I got the net present value, uh, the in investment in the equipment. When does that take place? Right now, and the cash flow uh, that's going out right now in this case is one hundred and sixty thousand dollars. And my factor is one. This one means well, how much is one hundred and sixty thousand dollars worth right now? Well, the answer is $160,000. The working capital going into the project right now is how much? It's worth $100,000 right now is worth $100,000. That seems simple, right? Okay. But what about this one? Net cash inflows for one to five years, and that's a present value of annuity at five years at 10%. You go to the chart, if you have the chart, uh, and, and you look at five years out at 10%, and it should give you this number right here, and, it, and there's an annuity table. Now, there's different tables. Uh, there's a table that's a, that's a one-time payment, and then there's the annuity table. That means the money is going in uh, every year, right? So, so think about this. Um, if you were saying... Uh, to your your cohorts where you work or somewhere and you said well this investment we're going to spend this much money uh, 160,000 but it's going to bring $80,000 in in uh, in income or revenue every year for 5 years and what immediately the person is going to be thinking well that's $400,000 80,000 times 5 we're going to have uh, we're going to make $400,000 in five years on a $160,000 investment. And so what, one of the things that they didn't think about was, of course, working capital. And they didn't think about the time value of money. So what this is saying is $80,000 a year over five years at a 10% discount rate is really only worth in today's money $303,000. So it's not going to bring in... I mean, it's going to bring 400000 on the books, but the present value, the value of 400000 spread out over five years is only 303000 And that's why this is such an important tool, because you can see how uh, the ordinary person would be really uh, deceived on this matter. Uh, relying on equipment, 
in three years going to cost thirty thousand dollars now this is on another chart there's a chart for a one-time deal well we're not going to spend thirty thousand every year we're going to spend it once in three years so how much is three how much is that three years from now how much is that worth at a ten percent discount rate well from the chart it gives you the number you calculate it twenty two thousand five hundred dollars okay and so on we go and your salvage equipment at the end of five years, five thousand and five years is only worth thirty three thousand one hundred dollars in today's money. Uh, relining equipment. No, oh, we already talked about that. Okay, so you get the picture here. So now um, one of the things that so you'll see here that uh, this particular scenario, this example, has all of those uh, cash inflows and cash outflows you'll see here's the hundred thousand of working capital released at the end of five years and it's only worth sixty two thousand dollars in five years what how much was it worth when we when we put it into the uh the project a hundred thousand dollars because that happened immediately okay so here says the net present value uh eighty five thousand nine fifty five so if you take all of the cash flows going out and the cash flow going in this particular project is worth eighty-five thousand nine fifty-five. Okay, so now think about this: if we had three alternatives, we could do this for each of the alternative uh, decisions, and the one with the highest net present value would be the project that we would choose. Okay. Now the other thing I want to point out here, which I'm not sure it says that here, but if it's positive, so yes, we're going to do this. If this was our only decision. Uh, it's positive, so we're going to say yes. If it's negative, think about that screening I was talking about a minute ago. We're not going to do it. We're not interested in a project that we're going to have the net present value of less uh, than zero. Now, why I'm going to say that is if it is zero, what if this was all added up and the net present value was zero? We invested this money, we spent money out, but money was coming in. At the end of five years, this was a zero net present value. Now, the, the theory in the book is, uh, is that you say, yes, I'm still going to pursue this. Because remember, the reason you're in business is not, and so, of course, well, I have to be careful how I say this. I always ask my students, why are you in business? Well, to make money. Well, yes, but the truth is, in corporate uh, world, you are in business to increase shareholder value or increase owner's equity. So if I can increase equity by getting a zero net present value, but I've added equity in the firm uh, by increasing the number of assets. So think about if I could go out and buy uh, 10 rental properties uh, that were not going to, uh, I, I was going to break even, so to speak, at the uh, over the next 10 years, I wasn't going to make any money. In other words, no cash is going into my bank account on those houses that I got out as rentals. But it, but my net worth at the end of five years uh, was substantially increased, right? Because I had those properties that were adding to my assets um, on my balance sheet and creating uh, shareholder value or owner's equity. Okay, well, I could go on and, and talk all day about this kind of stuff because I think it's fun. <laughs> now, you will see that uh, there's cost, lease cost decisions. Here's a new truck or an old truck. Uh, the, they've done the net present value. There's no revenue. This is a situation where both of the answers are negative. In this case, you're deciding, am I going to buy a new truck or keep the old truck and fix it up? And in this area, scenario, since there's no revenue coming in, yes, you're going to have a negative, but uh, it's the one that's the least, right? Which is the least negative? And in this case, it shows if we did the, went through this, it'd say, I bought the new truck and it's actually going to cost me less cash wise over the next five years than keeping my old truck and repairing it. Okay, 19 minutes. So, anyway, uh, Enjoy your week. Uh, just let God bless you and help you get this stuff done and uh, keep working. Thank you. For, uh, have a great week.